Who could be more? Since the days of the colorful old square rigged sailing ships, the Scottish sons of Greenock have ventured out to answer the call of the sea. For three centuries at more, her history has been written by ships and men. In Well Park, in the heart of the city, a memorial monument stands as a symbol of Greenock's role in the growth of Britain's empire. Just outside the city, nestled in the picturesque Spangle Valley, IBM's new plant is ready for dedication day, August 30th, 1954. A sunny summer breeze snaps the flags of the United Nations, representing Thomas J. Watson's devotion to the cause of world peace. Greenock needed new industry, and the IBM World Trade Corporation, offering new opportunities and new jobs, receives a warm welcome to the Spangle Valley. Lord Bilsland, chairman of the Scottish Council for Development and Industry, pays tribute to the industrial statesmanship of Thomas J. Watson. Mr. Watson, he says, is recognized on both sides of the Atlantic as one of the great captains of industry. Arthur K. Watson, president of IBM World Trade Corporation, expresses regret that business commitments have prevented his father from attending, pointing out that the plant's location had been his father's idea. He also voices sincere appreciation to the many who have helped to bring IBM to Greenwich. <laughs> Hector McNeil, member of parliament from Greenwich, speaks to World Trade's president for the people of Greenwich. I hope, Dick, that you'll tell your father that here in the Spangle Valley, he will not always have better employees than he would find anywhere else in Great Britain but better friends than you'll find anywhere in the world. Built to IBM specifications, the works, as they're called in Scotland, present American industry at its best, mass production efficiency, in a setting designed for individual cleanliness, comfort, and convenience. At the exhibit of IBM Parts and Products, Arthur Watson and the Right Honorable Hector McNeil exchange ideas on a subject of mutual interest, IBM equipment made in Greenwich, which will be shipped to 26 countries around the world. The equipment being manufactured here in the Spango Valley plant is produced by machines and methods brought from America. But the men who are making it are Scotsmen. Employees of IBM United Kingdom Limited, they are the newest members of the worldwide IBM family. Men like these, people of IBM, are doing jobs like these on every continent. Their names may be different, they may pledge allegiance to different flags, and they may worship in different churches. But whatever their differences, regardless of their nationalities, they share the willingness and desire to exchange a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. time at Greenock is pretty much the same as quitting time anywhere in the world. Bobby Lamont, Angus Malloy, and Hector McGregor are heading home, like the others, to family, dinner, and the evening paper. To the things at day's end that aren't really very different from men in Endicott, New York, Rio de Janeiro, or Milan, Italy, or Sindelfingen, Germany. Like men everywhere else who have good jobs and take pride in their work, they take pride in their homes. How different would these scenes be anywhere in the world? If world trade is a way to world peace, it is because it is a way to show all peoples in all lands that it is not the things that make them different, but the things they have in common that are important. Susan Malloy is just as enthralled by Jack the Giant Killer as if she lived on this side of the Atlantic.
Thank you.